All right. So we have here Rada. This is an electronic uh, company, which basically caters about radars for military and everything. So mm -hmm. when I was looking at it, um, it had just uh, made a two-year VCP breakout with a high revenue report. Hmm. Okay. Now, uh, I got here for uh, an entry also with Axelot Trade because most of the time we're going to use Axelot Trade as our platform to test stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, I'm not the Budweiser, but the wiser body. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just a joke. <laughs> and not a bot, but a, a bud. And a disclaimer that keep this one as for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> I am not a financial advisor. Mm -hmm. It's up to you if you believe me or not. Usually, <laughs> in, in every store, they, do, they say that. Yes. In every stock trader, you don't hold them responsible that they are the ones that make you lose money. Exactly. Okay. Now, the, for the company information, this guy here, this is actually an Israeli-based uh, company. So this is an international company which had been established in uh, 1985. They got some tactical devices and applications that uh, the uh, supply and create for military. Um, one of their projects is basically the anti-missile. Uh, um, like you see this uh, tank. Mm -hmm. Most of the tank, um, you know, the, most of the opponents of the military, especially U.S. military, is that um, they have this. Uh, um, you know, opponents, and they have this like handheld missile. And sometimes they cannot be detected right away. Eh? So what's happening, they, they produce this anti-missile device, short, this is what we call short range, because all the handheld ones are just short range missile. Mm -hmm. So what they do is create some kind of a special device that whenever it detects uh, a low range missile, it creates the flare, and then basically it makes the missile to explode before hitting the target. Hmm. Uh, very short range air defense, the VS Hurad, that's the, the solution, that's what they're trying to do. And their customers include Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Leonardo DRS, Israel Aerospace Industries, Embraer, and other military industries hmm. and you know military they have big budget eh? mm -hmm. so basically these guys if they get a contract wow this means that this is huge it is yeah so 25 meter range 50 meter range so that's the range of the missile it can detect that and then that's why they call it very short range air defense. So that's one of the stuff that the uh, they create. And this one had been flagged in our uh, stock fetcher filter. I don't know if you had been daily keeping log with the day, uh, with the new seven to eight day high. I have to check it every day. Why? August thirteen and August uh, and uh, twenty. August 13 mm -hmm. and August 20. And since it broke out August 13 from the high of 396, Rada made already 15.75. You know, that's uh, as of this writing of August 21, 2019, to 15%. Mm -hmm. uh, that's quite an impressive gain, too, right? In just a few days. Mm -hmm. Now, it's good to evaluate this kind of company. It's good to evaluate this kind of move and double check whether that momentum has some power for us to be able to ride with. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, just a review of what we had tackled last week that 
you do this roundhouse kick of trading, you follow five simple steps. Number one, we investigate. What do we investigate? The company. The company, but specifically, what do we investigate? Why the stock um, went up. We investigate the stock, but we investigate what? Mm -hmm. Our stock, which basically pertains the chart, right? So we investigate the chart for technical okay. analysis. We yeah. investigate what else? Fundamentals. Yes. Fundamentals where you could see the financial health of a company, right? Mm -hmm. And then we also investigate the sentiment of the market based on news. Okay, so these are the three key things that you have to investigate. And then number two, we calculate. What do we calculate? Our pro the targets, the profit we want to make, um, and the how they got their loss percentage. So we would like to calculate the target price. Mm -hmm. The purpose of that is that so that we know where we're heading. Yes. We know what direction we have to take, right? And if we're going to reverse us, then uh, we know also where and what point we have to get out, right? Mm -hmm. So that comes in also with number three, weighing in the risk and the reward. Is the reward outweighs the risk or can I risk more? So if I would like to gain more, something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and then number four, execute. Execute the plan. One, two, and three basically is planning your trade. And then number four is trading your plan. Do not deviate, just trade your plan. And then once it's done, Repeat it. Okay. Just keep doing the same cycle over and over. And once it is ingrained in you, it's like shooting a basketball, right? It's like Michael Jordan out looking at the hoop. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And yeah, now we go to investigating the chart. Chart is the key of our technical analysis. So like I said, it had gone out uh, the two-year VCP uh, formation, but exactly it's like one year and 10 months because uh, from October 9 of 2017, we're still in August or September. So you still have September and October, right? So mm -hmm. one year and 10 months of uh, volatility, so contraction of price and look at how it is heading. and. If you could take a look, even during this drop of, of the price, the contraction of the price, look what's happening with the volume. The volume is really getting very low also, right? Mm -hmm. uh, something, is, something must be going on here. And then all of a sudden, there is a huge volume right here, August 20, boom, and a breakout. Breakout of what? Previous highs. Top one. Uh, top, top number two, top number three, so three breakouts. So it's a triple, triple top breakout. Mm -hmm. Right now, what is this for us? Um, it is for us to look at it, maybe review the the re review the stock. And then wait for, wait for a pullback, then enter. Okay, good. So just to give you a closer look, kind of like a zoom in on this one. Um, take a look, because chart is actually your key also of knowing the behavior or character of a stock. Because each stock, they have their own character and behavior, and that's what we need to identify. For example, the one that I labeled 3.63, 
Yeah. What have you noticed? That's a breakout, right? A breakout from a previous high. But what have you noticed? Here, I'd like you to take a look at this. 3.63. The one that I labeled 3.63. Mm -hmm. This this candle here, that's actually a breakout from this VCP formation, right? Yes. Now, come to take a look at it. After a breakout, what does it do? It just retested the last support and then it move up. It's actually pulling back to the low of the breakout candle. Yes. Do you agree? Yes. There you go. The pullback just went just went down, but it was like a quick one. It goes right also where the low of the breakout candle. Now look at again another one. Is it the same? Yes, it's exactly the same. <laughs> what do you think is gonna happen here? It's going to break out a very big one. The behavior is there. Yes. One, and so it's it's leading you to kind of like a it's giving you kind of a a, a character. Kufri, this this is how do I look? I look very pretty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cow, look at me. <laughs> so what do you think will be the behavior? The behavior is just like history repeats itself. So the same also the character would always show, right? Mm -hmm. So in that case you have to be prepared. Where are you going to enter for that matter, right? Yes. Let's continue. Let's see what's going to happen. I like that analysis in that place. Let me just um, get that one there. <laughs> because sometimes when you pull back, uh -huh. it's, I wait for it to say, see how long it's going to pull back. <laughs> right. Sometimes it looks like, oh, is it going to come back again? <laughs> That's how um, S SMSI did. SMSI, yeah. Yes. Correct. And that was a good one. Yes. But other than the investigation of the chart, we need to investigate also the fundamentals. So that's why we need to double check this one here, check that goal. Mm -hmm. What is this? This is an, actually an Edgar company filings. Company filings are requirements of any public company. So any public companies traded in uh, New York Stock Exchange or whatever exchange, they have the duty to actually submit their company filings so that everyone could see. Uh, all you have to do is just click company filings, type in radar on a fast search, click search, and that should give you an idea what are you looking for. And just a review, if you would like to know more about SEC filings, you can also visit this uh, uh, website. So that's why uh, I told you on the email that uh, there are links that I had placed so that for you to be able to review what does it mean for some of the technical stuff that you might come across. Okay, most important here is actually the 8K and the 6K and the 10K and the 10Q. Very important. The 6K. Yeah. 6K, 8K. 10K and 10Q. Okay. All right, so let's continue. So this is what actually showed up when we uh, actually uh, double check um, radar. So there was a 6K that had been um, submitted August 21. This is a report of a foreign issuer because radar is it's an Israeli company, so that's why it's a it's called 6K. That would have been 10K 
if uh, it is a U.S. company. Okay. So they have the exhibit here. When you click all this, it should pop up this thing here. And uh, the most important thing, what the number one that we always try to look for is always for the revenue. Yes. Yeah. Now this is the highlight. Revenue surpassed ten million dollars. So it was up fifty two percent year over year. Is that a big increase year over year? Fifty two percent. And expect full year of two thousand nineteen revenue to surpass forty three million. This is what we call guidance. Hmm. So all those who are reviewing and uh, checking out the radar they were actually saying that okay the probability is that it's going to make 42 million but radar said no it will surpass 42 million hmm. presenting 52 54 percent year over year growth so it means from 52 they're going to increase two percent more this is a company guidance and usually if the company issues a company guidance that is higher than what is expected there is that one will always affect the price of the stock this you always come to expect that the stock would always uh, increase okay. Okay. And, uh, look at it revenue the one that i highlighted with red mm -hmm. um on three months that ended look 2018 it made six million five hundred seventy six and it bumped up four million more in 2019 in a six months that had ended comparing 2018 and 2019 from 12 to 18. Hmm. it's still a big jump right yeah now aside from the revenue okay we also would like to check for the net so whether is it losing money or is it what income does it make mm -hmm. it, you come to check it seems that 2018 it made uh, an income of 12 but it doesn't make any it, it made actually um a deficit figure in 2019 same here 215 and now they have 1 million 358 thousand of uh, deficit so the cost of operation is too high the, the revenue is high but why there is no income With the cost of operation that's what you need to double check maybe there are so many things that are involved here one is probably they still have some accumulated um, receivables which they haven't collected yet because sometimes you know when the government they might not pay right away right they, we don't mm -hmm. and stuff like that and uh, there is always like a some companies you make contract with them they will pay only after six months so the payment is always left behind so that's what you need to check whether there are some receivables so asset cash and cash equivalent so the cash had reduced also so from 20 million to 14 million total asset almost the same mm -hmm. contract assets the contract they have a lot more contracts now 1.3 trade receivables okay so here you go they have they have 14 million receivables and long-term liability the liability well it's almost the same it's just 10.9 is 11 you just increase for uh, now what a million more radar equity the equity is almost the same so if you think about it if you are an investor you have a billion dollar 
And here comes this guy called Rada. Feel free. Could you invest in us? We are a high tech company, you know, providing the military with, you know, high, high standard equipment against, uh, you know, any uh, airborne missile, something like that. Would you put your money? I will. Yeah. Especially considering the current situation in the world right now, I don't think this kind of thing would stop. Even when North Korea threatens. Yes. Yeah, the South Korea will need this kind of a thing because some, sometimes South Korea is afraid. <laughs> yeah. so they, fact, I, I think they just created also another product that was, that would actually be used for as a drone countermeasure. So, um, you know, there had been a lot of reports lately, right, that uh, the U.S. drones had been, you know, attacked and then, you know, hit by missiles and everything like that, right? Mm -hmm. So, and it said they have this uh, product that basically kind of like, uh, you know, they have also the anti-missile um, against uh, any attack for drones that the military is going to use for, in, you know, for uh, surveillance purposes, something like that. So, the best thing also is to visit the website. If you look at the website, website looks good. If, if the website doesn't look good, it means this company is no good. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it seems, uh, seems okay. On their website, there's what we call news under corporate. They actually placed here August 5, 2019. It announced that they received a $9 million new orders. That's a big contract, $9 million. This is the content of that report. Netanya, Israel, August 5, 2019, Radar Electronics Industries announced that it received $9 million in new orders, July 2019. I highlighted again another one here. The $8 million of orders are for Radar's radar system. Well, $1 million are avionics orders, applications for the radar system, okay, like uh, VS HORAD, CRAM, counter rocket artillery mortar solution. Now, this highlight that I place here, the vast majority of the orders are follow-on orders from customers that were acquired by Rada in the past two years. The vast majority of the orders are follow-on orders. So it means uh, the customer like. That's why they're putting up new orders. Mm -hmm. But the same customer. Now, if and only if probably the, if uh, Rada could expand their customer base, then maybe we'll see more and increase also of their production. Although this one could increase already the production by just having a repeat order, right? Mm -hmm. The CEO is saying, we are very pleased with this follow on orders, mainly because many of them come from, this, from some of our new cost customers, newer customers. This demonstrates their satisfaction with the initial product. And that's true. If your customer repeats ordering, it means they are satisfied mm -hmm. with they made with us. And we look forward to growing our sales to them. So I hope that they are not just going to depend on just maybe those customers that they had acquired two years ago. Because if they're going to rely just that, then the momentum might just stall. Yes. Yeah. So these are just some kind of stuff. So maybe in the short run, you will see Rada going up, but uh, there could be some rest that you would be able to see also, unless they are going to acquire again new customers. That's how you evaluate that one based on this news. Now we check Rada. 
with Yahoo Finance. Yahoo Finance just basically reiterated what they had. So a strong revenue growth, Q2 revenue of $10 million, which is 52% year over year. But then they were saying, oh, we can surpass that 43 million. We're gonna grow 54 million year, uh, 52, uh, 54 percent, sorry, year over year. So a good guidance. And usually, when a company has a very good guidance, uh, then you would see that the price also would be going up. Mm -hmm. You can bank on that one. You can ride on the shoulders of the giant. So here. Revenue total 10 million in a quarter compared with the revenues of 6.6 .6 million. Okay, gross profit 3.6, operating loss of 0.8 million compared to operating income of 0.1 million. Uh, there's a 0.7 difference. Net loss, rate of shareholders, 0.6 million dollars or 0 0.01 per share. So one cent of a share was lost. Not too bad. Mm -hmm. So June 30, 2019, Rada had net cash and cash equivalent of 15 million compared to 21 million. So like I said, like the one that I showed you a while ago, right? Mm -hmm. so the instead the cash had reduced, okay, from 21 to 15. Now they have to be careful because if they are not going to acquire new customers, means they are going to deplete also the their money and then once they deplete their money and then they're going to issue more shares uh, that will dilute the 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 shares the stock uh, holders uh, equity and uh, eventually share the um, the investors don't like that and 2019 first half revenues totaled 18.7 gross profit 2006.7 so 36% of the revenue increase of 48% compared to gross profit of 4.6, good. Operating loss of 1.4 uh, compared to the operating income of 0.3. Uh, net loss attributable to RADA shareholders in the first half was 1, point, 1, uh, 1 million or 3 cents per share compared to a net profit of 0.3 million or or one cent per share in the first half of 2018. So 2018 is one cent per share. Now it dropped to three cents per share. That's the net loss. Mm. And let's go to Finvis. You know how to go to Finvis. Uh, usually you just have to click the screener, type in the ticker symbol, and look for the ticker symbol you just have to press enter there and this is these are the key things that i would love to double check the eps qq and the sales qq so remember what i told you that they maintain their current customers and then the new orders comes from the old customers and if you cannot, cannot produce new customers, then in that case, um, it might deplete also the more of their cash, right? Yes. So even though they have an increased revenue. So that's why they need to push more on the sales. That's why here, they marked as negative 7.7 .7 for sale. The EPS is really too high, 330. I would love to see that when you, the sales and the APS QQ, they have the same, like they are all high because if the, if you see them both as high, then there's a big possibility that this one would really go shooting up like star. OTC markets, same. When you go to the news of OTC markets, uh, so this is about the, the earnings. It's more on the revenue. And then this one is on stock rates. I like this one to push next 5.6 to 645. So some guys are actually looking at waiting for the price to go as high as 645. So from 560 to 645. So 
you are trying to get now the sentiment of the people, right? That's what you are trying to see. You know, you you read, you understand what does the chart means to you, and now you are trying to get also the pulse of the of uh, of the market. So that's how you are going to to look at it on all angles. I see. And review again. Full round house cake in trading consists of the following steps. Investigate, calculate, weigh, execute. We just did the investigation of the fundamentals, the technical on the chart, and the sentiment on the news, right? The chart looks great. The fundamentals in terms of revenue looks great. In terms of net profit, uh, you still they have to work. So, so. On, they have to work <laughs> on that one, and in terms of cash, they have to work also on that one. How they need to acquire more customers, and I think maybe they, they should be they can acquire more customers. For example, with all this, with all these uh, problems uh, overseas, right? Yeah, when did the, when did the customer start production? So when did they write us start production? When did they start? They, they had that report July 5, right? So uh, if they received that $9 million July 5, then... I mean, like, how many years ago? Oh, uh, okay, what did this, when did they start? 1985. It's a long time. They should have got, like, you know that there was a time that, um, Canadian soldiers used to go to Iraq and Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And why didn't Canada Canada buy this for their military so that they are not, you know, they say that a missile explode or something explode and kill the soldiers? You know, Canada doesn't have the money to buy those things. And usually Canada doesn't really spend money too much on the military. The U.S. <laughs> spends more on the military. It's different to the government. And you know what Canada does? They buy this old one. <laughs> yeah. Remember, instead of buying, you know, the the latest uh, model of uh, airplane, uh, what what did they F sixteen? Oh, F sixteen or fourteen? That was old one. Okay. But they may still work, but uh, they're behind technology. Well, probably the government will also say we are we are a neutral country. We do not want really to go for fighting. We just kind of help U.S. Mm -hmm. right? That's correct. Mm. And uh, and it's it's up also to the person. You want to put your money. You don't want to actually put your money here in, in the long run. You just want to ride with this one in a short ride. That's it. Good. Yes. And I'm just telling you what could happen. Probably the momentum, while it's still hot, you can ride the momentum. The momentum here, the one that will push for, is actually the revenue and this order. Usually when I see, uh, when you see a combination of a new order and a combination of a strong revenue and a combination of uh, guidance. Oh, okay. When the guidance is high, okay, a combination of a good guidance, good revenue, and new order, so it means it's good. It means they have a good management. They just need to have a good marketing. So, but the product is good. So product is good because there is a repeat order, right? And there is a, a, a good guidance. So it means... Um, the management believe that they can really hit the target. So yes. that is a combination of the process, the management, and the product. You have that kind of combination, it would push the price up. Now we do the calculation. Before hitting a buy, it should be clear in your mind what is your target price. What is the formula? Um, it's displayed here. Previous high minus volatility, contraction low, times three plus um, uh, 
Uh, and you add it to the breakout close, right? Breakout close, yes. Okay. So let's see. This is supposed to be three, not two. Okay, the, the one there. That is just a typo. Oh, that's times three. Yeah, it's times three. Yeah. The one below is right. The one on top is wrong. So if you the formula here is three. So it's just a typo here on the chart. So you have here nine million dollar contract, and then you have here the strong revenue plus the guidance there at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's a, a three combination. And you have a strong volume, strong price. And try to do the calculation. Let's see what's going to happen. DC 490, so the breakout close at 419, previous high 395. I choose two volatility low, 315 and 250. So because I see there's a strong volume here, and then there's a, there's a strong volume, but a small price. But then there is a strong, there is a strong price and a small volume. So what I did, I kind of like use this usually, this this is where it all started because look from the drop of this big candle it created this base and that from the from this base this is where it actually shoots up so i use this one as the volatility low okay the 2.5 2.5 okay. so we make a calculation ph minus vl times 3 plus dc 395 minus 2.5 times 3 plus dc it comes out actually 8.5 8.5 so that's the target now there was a link that i uh, gave you this this one here if you if you click on that link it would actually show you a calculator that I created. So that way, all you have to do is just enter and plug whatever you want to, to do, right? Mm -hmm. so for example, let's say Rada, we plug the breakout as 419, the previous high is 395, and then the volatility low as 2.5. So now we have a target price of 854. <clears throat> This is setting our target, but we need to know we, we have a target of 8.5, but where are we going to enter? Um, I will choose this on um, 4.3. Okay, so if you look up here, every stock has its own character and behavior. All you have to do is analyze, observe, and follow it. Just as history repeats itself, behavior is inherent and will always appear back in time. Look mm -hmm. at price set A, so this one and b radar breaks up and then it would always pull back down to the low of the breakout candle mm -hmm. correct yes same on set b it breaks up and then it pulled back to the low this one then it went a little bit higher so it means if this one goes right at the very tip of the low and this one went higher, so what does it mean when this one goes here? So maybe it, it's not going to probably go right here, but maybe it would probably have some somewhere here, right? Mm -hmm. So it means buy at the bottom of a breakout green candle, which is around 430. So this, it's always right. <laughs> yeah. Now, in order for you to get filled, you're not going to order at 430 because you don't know. Now, have you noticed this one? It, it touches the low, but this one, it didn't touch the low. So we don't know. Maybe it would increase, right? Mm -hmm. So you may set it 10 cents higher just to get your trade filled. This would come out 440. But 440 is very near already to the whole number support.
um whole number support goes like you know like one dollar mm -hmm. 25 one 150 you know all those uh it's like a whole coins it's like coins right so mm -hmm. the nearest one is 450 right so the best way is probably to set that one at 450 maybe you could have also two orders you want you want to set at 430 and one for 450 you can break it something like that it's up to you set up one again four digits and four so let's say if i would like to spend uh a thousand bucks so maybe 500 for 450 and then 500 for 430 something like okay. that okay okay you kind of like break it up so that way it it, whichever one hits first review again for investigate calculate we did investigate and we did calculate but we haven't weighed in the risk and the reward okay that's what we need to do next warren buffett has two rules in investing never lose your money number two rule look at rule number one <laughs> so with this in mind we need to define our entry and then we have to check what what are the lowest risk, what are what are higher risk. Okay, set stop loss at least five percent below the entry price. Here you get here you might get blown right away if price will be so volatile, but it won't create a big damage also on your part. If you want to do a little bit of risk, you set the stop loss one third of the profit target. Let us say your profit would be would amount to three dollars. You're mm -hmm. willing to lose one dollar in a case the trade goes against you. Then you can set a higher percentage at up to eighteen percent of your entry price. If price is so volatile, you cannot be wiped out right away. But your losses would of course be bigger than what was set at five percent. So mark the percentage of cash to risk. Use the profit target calculator for setting up this one. Now let's see. Let's open up the profit target calculator. It's open. So we did already our target. Now it's for us to set up the stop loss and everything. See, we have already in mind that our entry is 550, right? Mm -hmm. If you want a lower risk, set your stop loss 5%. So let's say if it drops 5%, from 550 so let's say for example we enter here at 550 okay, this is this is our entry 550 mm -hmm. say if we set that one at five percent it means if the price goes down to 523 here you get out it means you lose 28 cents mm -hmm. right so you need to know that that I only allow myself to lose 28 cents per, per a share, okay? So you don't want to lose more of the, uh, how do you call this, of the price. But for example, sometimes also if you put it so, if you put the stop loss very, very low, you get wiped out also right away because some of these market makers, they're very good in eating up stop losses that's why i don't really put a, a hard stop loss i always have it mentally mm -hmm. but at least i know like up to what level i should lose so for example how much do i lose okay uh, how much can i take let's say if it goes against me if it goes 70 dollars to 80 dollars then i know i'll have to pull the trigger out mm -hmm. right because that's my that's my plan that I'm going to lose only 5%. Now, if you are a little bit, you know, on the go of making it higher. So, so right now, actually, if you come to take a look at it, the ratio of your profit and reward or risk and reward is that your reward would be $3 but you your risk is only 28 cents 
very very small mm -hmm. now if you would like to increase that one as like three to one you can do so all you have to do is just increase this one so let's say 18 18.6 yeah 18.6 18.6 percent of the stop loss against your entry is three is to one okay so if your target is 854 so that would make you three dollars every share right uh -huh. now how much are you willing to uh, actually um lose one dollar okay. yes okay so in that case be prepared that your money would dip to 240 dollars this one if that if you bought like a thousand shares so let's yeah for example if i if the cash that i would like to raise is 1250 and i bought 225 shares it means i am willing that if it goes down 240 dollars i'm not going to pull it uh it goes down to 200 dollars i'm not going to pull the trigger out yet only when it drops to 240 that's the only time i have to get out so it means okay. I'm willing to hold until minus 240. you know what i mean yes i do okay that's why this is very important if you have a plan you're not going to get scared because you ha you know uh, this is I this is how much I am willing, okay, to lose. I'm willing to lose one dollar each share. Okay, so if for example you are not prepared to lose one dollar each share, then decrease your stop stop loss percentage. You can have five percent meaning once it reaches 523 you get out if you want a little bit higher maybe not not so let's say if you 28 maybe is also very very small for you and you want a wiggle room maybe you could increase this one to seven percent right so at mm -hmm. least 39 or you can even increase it to not maybe nine percent so around 50 cents you're willing to lose 50 cents per share so it means you are ready also to if for example you are losing 75 dollars and then your pnl is showing you have a pnl of minus 75 instead of having oh, oh, oh my goodness it's going to go down no you don't get scared because your plan is to lose 120 dollars Your plan is to lose $120. It didn't hit $120. You're still happy. If it hits $120, okay, then you get out. Okay. Hmm. Now, if it works on your, if it if the plan works out, then that's a different story. But at least with this kind of plan, knowing the weight between the risk and the reward, because you're your reward here is around three dollars your risk is 50 cents okay now mm -hmm. what is 50 cents against three dollars that's what you're trying to bet on now if it doesn't go down as far as 50 cents you're good okay. so this is where you could play around on your stop loss and uh and then as much as possible that's why as much as possible i I always tell you that make sure that you enter also, you know, at the time we're in, there is a pullback because at least with the pullback, um, you are actually setting yourself at a lower price. And if in case it goes down, it doesn't really go down that much because it had pulled back already, right? Uh -huh. And like when it's really at the very top and you chase it, uh and then all of a sudden it made a pullback and you get scared and usually sure. sometimes the pullback can go as far as a hundred percent of the candle that breaks out so that's why make sure that you set up properly your stop loss 
This is the key. And as soon as you plan very well, I'm willing. How much you are willing? I'm willing 50 cents against three dollars. If you're not willing 50 cents, okay, I'm willing 55, uh, uh, 25 cents. Can you Seven, seven, seven or six. Okay. So this particular one is like a program. Yeah, I I created I created this one for you to be able to um how do you call this? I have the spreadsheet. Yeah, you have the spreadsheet. That's why I gave you this one. So and this is the key actually. You can calculate this one on your own. Okay. But uh, the good thing when you have some kind, some kind of a calculator, all you have to do is just input everything, right? And then you know, like, oh, okay, this is how much I am willing to risk, and this is the profit that I am looking forward. Okay. okay? So that's why if you're able to do that, you're able to weigh in what is the risk and what is the reward. Oh, I tell you, uh, you'll be very happy to sleep. <laughs> so, uh, is it clear? Do you have any question? No, it's very good. Okay. So, some this is a sample set at five percent. For every three dollar profit target, you're you're only willing to lose twenty eight cents. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's a a six hundred it's six hundred dollar reward. You want to lose at least seventy dollars, or you want to risk seventy dollars. That's what it means when okay. you have it at five percent. Now, if this is a sample set at eighteen point three percent, for every three dollar profit, you want to lose only one dollar, or you want you are ready to lose at least one dollar. Mm -hmm. So, you make the if you make six hundred seventy four dollars, meaning you are ready to risk at least. $236. So if it dips $236, you're still okay. And then it goes back up and raise 674. That is actually what you are looking forward. All right, review. The full roundhouse kick in trading consists of the following steps. Number one, investigate, calculate. And number three, weighed in between risk and reward and we just did that mm -hmm. so next one oops sorry that was so fast execute now that we have planned the trade it's time to trade the plan <laughs> buy on pullbacks execute your stop loss if the trade goes against you never hope never hesitate just do it okay Execute your cash out plan if the trade pans out well for you. Always put money into your pocket and never leave it on the table. Okay, so how do we do that? So it's like this. On a 5% stop loss, this is what we are looking for. Shares to risk at 225. Oh, by the way, I haven't, uh, sorry, I haven't explained to you what is this tra trading variables? I added trading variables there. Let me, okay, what is this trading variable? You add trading fee, and then how much cash do you have? Here, percent of the cash to risk. Let's say I have a total of $5,000 in my RRSP or my TFSA, okay, something like that. And I am willing only to use 25% of that. So it means, okay, 25% of 5,000 is 1,250, 250, okay? Mm -hmm. Now automatically it will compute you how much share do you need to buy against Radas share. So it tells you, yeah, you need 225 because one 250, um, you will spend 1,242. That is your entry amount. And then your profit would be 674. Okay. So it means um, you exit 1,900. Okay. At 1,900, something like that. Okay. 
So you can add here on the trading variables the cash that you have on that particular uh, trading account and then how much cash are you willing to allocate for this trade that's why you have the percentage there okay and let's go back to the presentation there you go so it depends if you're five if you are setting it up at five percent Cash to risk is 1,250. The shares to risk, 225. Like on 18.3% stop loss, same, 1,250. But then you are ready to get out at 449. Here you are ready to get out at 523. If it's okay. 523, get out. If it dips 449, get out. That's what it is. So it means this one also, same, you have the same target, 854. The next one, this is, uh, this is what we call scaling out. So between 550 and 850, there are a whole number of resistance. These are train stops. These are your scale out stops to put money into your pocket. So for example, the 650, 7, 8, 850. So, for example, you can cash out the first 100 shares at 650. You can cash out 50 shares and then at seven, another 50 shares, and then you let let the rest of the other 25 maybe ride wherever it goes. You know what I'm saying? Yes, we have done that in uh, Accelerator Trader, yes. Yes, that way, or you can also scale out by halves. So for example, maybe 100, 150 something like that maybe at seven then another uh 100 and or maybe 75 something like that so it, it depends how you're going to structure it but at least put money back into your pocket so th this is just an example of a scale out strategy of which you can devise also your own often when a whole number is tested a pullback comes and the price may just continue to fail that is why when price approaches a whole number resistance, I place a sell order 0 0.05 or 10 cents lower than the whole number. Let's say if it approaches seven dollars, my exit is 6.95. If if it hits eight dollars, my exit is 7.95. Here at 8.50, my exit probably is around 8.45, 43, something like that. Okay. Yes, I see. Review full round house kick. So we got number three covered. We got number four covered. So once you're done, repeat the cycle. That's it. Practice makes you perfect. Keep following the rules and just keep repeating the cycle, and success is yours for the taking. Then Bruce Lee once said, I fear not the man who has practiced 10 times. A kick once, but I fear the man who practiced one kick ten times. There are ten thousand times. And this is if you keep practicing the same cycle over and over. One, two, three. What is that? One, two, three. Investigate, calculate, and weigh. Yeah. So one, two, three is planning your trade. Okay. Number four is execute execution is trading your plan so michael jordan he missed nine thousand shots that's why he became the greatest basketball player <laughs> wayne Gretzky once said i missed a hundred percent on those shots that i never took and uh, edison also said the one thousand mistakes i made were just 1,000 steps in creating the light bulb. The perspective is keep practicing until you become, you know, confident of what you're doing. And once you have that confidence of doing what you are supposed to do, then you start winning. Thank you very much for the lesson, for listening. This is your axillo bud. <laughs> Not your bud wiser, but your wiser bud. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> that was the good lesson summary of what we have done for months. Yes, and uh, at least it, it, you now have an idea how everything goes. All you have to do is just look up the cycle, okay? Just look up the cycle, and that's that's about it. Okay, so I think that's all for now. Yes. And uh, hopefully you have a nice weekend, go free. Oh, I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome, man. And uh, yeah, and if you could, uh, if you could start, you know, teaching others, you are paying forward. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend, man. Cheers. All right. Bye-bye.